I'm Britton Clenet and welcome to China Insight, where we discuss the latest issues affecting this rapidly changing country. Well, China's military is one of the world's largest, with some two million soldiers serving in the army. But plans are now in the pipeline to modernize and streamline the country's armed forces. As the leadership undertakes this huge task, what challenges lie ahead? With me in the studio today is current affairs commentator Victor Gao. Welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. Could you guide us through the key steps of this military reform? The uh, ongoing military reform is the uh, most profound and most comprehensive reform of the Chinese military probably ever since its founding in 1927 and is definitely the largest scale military reform ever since the founding of the People's Republic of China in 1949. Now, it involves several key aspects of very crucial importance is a complete revamp of the command system of the People's Liberation Army. The second key element is to change the original layout of the army, mm -hmm. uh, which included seven military regions. There is an effort dedicated to tearing down the internal walls within the military because mm -hmm. previously each military command was like a huge mountain in itself. It right. has everything built into it. Mm -hmm. Now the five battle zones uh, would be much more modernized, using right. your term, and also much leaner and uh, much more coordinated with the others. So right. if there is any war or conflict breaking out, the mobilization will be much quicker and more effective, and the resources are not bottomed down mm -hmm. and burdened down in each geographical region. The third element is to cut the Chinese military force by 300 thousand mm. soldiers and officers. Okay, well I want to get into the nitty-gritty with you a little bit, but first we're going to have the following report which looks into this military reform. Let's take a look. Thank you. The Chinese People's Liberation Army, or PLA, with the strength of approximately two million officers and soldiers, is the armed services of the People's Republic of China. It is the world's largest military force, and that's despite recent planned cutbacks in personnel. China. The PLA traces its roots back to the Chinese Workers and Peasants Red Army, which was founded on August 1, 1927. The Red Army, as it was known, was formed by a group of Communist Party members who broke away from the Kuomintang in the wake of a series of anti-communist purges ordered by Chiang Kai-shek. The Red Army survived several more campaigns against it and, in 1936, famously completed the Long March. During the anti-Japanese war of 1937 to 1945, it was integrated into the National Revolutionary Army of the Republic of China, forming two main units, the 8th Root Army and the new 4th Army. After the Japanese surrender in 1945, these two units were merged under communist command and renamed the People's Liberation Army. It was in his speech on September 3rd, 2015, at the military parade marking the 70th anniversary of China's victory over Japan, that President Xi Jinping announced a reduction in the PLA's size. The cuts, mainly targeting units equipped with outdated armaments, administrative staff and non-combat personnel, will be completed by the end of 2017. This and other measures are aimed at transforming the PLA from a military based on quantity to one based on quality and effectiveness. In other words, at creating a modern army capable of winning a 21st century war.
Xi Jinping set the scene for the reforms in March 2013 when he said that the objective was to build a strong army, one that, he stressed, obeys the party's orders, is capable of winning battles and has a sound work style. The time of year for army recruitment was subsequently moved from winter to summer to coincide with college graduation. The hoped for increase in the number of graduate recruits, the thinking went, would raise the army's overall quality and improve combat effectiveness. This was also the objective of measures announced last year to improve soldiers' welfare. Later in 2015, some major structural changes to the PLA were announced. Two new strategic professional services branches were added to bring the number to five. In addition to the traditional ground, navy and air forces, the PLA now has a rocket force and a strategic support force. As a new type of combat unit, the strategic support force significantly enhances the PLA's combat capabilities. As for the rocket force, its modern weaponry and expertise are seen as vital for maintaining national security in the 21st century. The第二炮兵更名为火箭军，不仅检视名称的改变，它标志着第二炮兵实现了有兵种向军种的历史性跨越。在职能定位和使命任务上，都提出了更高的要求，比如习主席在给火箭军的训职中提出了核残精备、全
One such case was Sun Haidong. His wife had found a job in Herbei and had joined him less than a year before, after they'd spent 15 years living apart. But then Sun had to leave. But for him and numerous others, there was no hesitation. Duty always comes first. Before he pulls the trigger, Tao Young prepares himself mentally. Cao Yang is a member of a 300 strong special operations force under the 12th Group Army. Three years ago, it was an ordinary infantry unit. Building up a highly proficient special ops force in such a short time, despite a lack of professional equipment and expertise, is testimony to the soldiers' determination to succeed. <laughs> Every member of the unit is required to master seven core skills, which include underwater diving, sniping, handling explosives, hand-to-hand -hand combat and reconnaissance. Cao Yang, who has excelled in military competitions, has now set his sights on becoming an officer. For the 2nd Artillery Corps, now known as the People's Liberation Army Rocket Force, the reform of late 2015 has imposed tougher requirements. The demands for it to be more mobile and to cooperate more effectively with other service arms have led to radical changes in training. For the soldiers, this means a daily grind of repeating the same procedures over and over again. But there is good reason for it. The soldiers are trained to deal with all potential dangers and every eventuality, ranging from an enemy airstrike to an unexpected change in the weather. So naturally, operating in the rain is also part of the training. Two or three times a week, the launch operators take part in special forces training. It may have little relevance to their performance of their regular duties, but it's regarded as important for their overall development. Yes, you should 
对我们官兵也是一个考验，啊，需要有这种强迫的啊，这种体魄啊，来支撑着我们的作战，啊，所以说基于这些考虑啊，我们单位就设置了这个叫精气神的对抗。In China, the PLA's role often extends beyond the military field. Service personnel are regularly called upon to offer assistance to the public in times of need and to help with construction projects. They have, over the past 20 years, supported thousands of disaster relief efforts, rescuing millions of people. Soldiers have also been involved in constructing roads, bridges and reservoirs, as well as in more high-tech undertakings. On September 15, 2016, the Space Laboratory Tiangong-2 was successfully launched from the Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center in Gansu Province. The launch towers were built by soldiers from the Beijing Special Engineering Force, the PLA's only military unit capable of building satellite and spacecraft launch towers. The members of the force spend more than 10 months of every year in remote parts of the country, away from their homes and families. They build the launch towers in conditions of extreme winter cold and intense summer heat, but they remain undaunted. The greatest hardship is not the poor conditions or the technical problems they face, but the separation from their families. Thank you. 感觉心里面那种苦就上来了。其实部队的基本的精神就是四个特别精神，也就是特别能吃苦、特别能战斗、特别讲文明、特别守纪律。确实是他已经融入了我们部队的血脉，不用不用去诠释，不用去每个人都是在行动中去落实，就是这么一代一代的传承下来的。With the aim of constructing better and better launch towers to support China's space exploration, the force is embracing the military reforms. It is concentrating on recruiting more talent, developing new techniques and training more qualified engineers and soldiers. The major reforms of the PLA, which began at the end of 2015, will be completed in 2020. By that time, China will have a modern army with a highly effective command system and an optimized size and structure. As a modern military force, the PLA will be capable of safeguarding China's national security, supporting its development and maintaining international peace. What does China hope to achieve through these changes? I think uh, the mission for the Chinese uh, military is mm -hmm. to defend the motherland mm -hmm. and to uh, compel or defeat any attempted uh, invasion of China. And so I security think this is the main the point. Security is the aim. Absolutely. Security, but also the efficiency in uh, getting the job done mm -hmm. and uh, also to try to eliminate 
uh, bureaucracy mm -hmm. and inefficiency mm -hmm. and sometimes corruption in the uh, military lineup. It's obviously a huge a mammoth task lies ahead uh, for the leadership. Uh, what are the joint, uh, what are the implications for the joint operations between the Air Force and the Navy? Well, if we look at the Chinese uh, military forces in terms of its lineup and allocation of resources, the army is the most and the largest uh, force, mm -hmm. actually, uh, and the Navy and the Air Force, which are increasingly being modernized, mm -hmm. uh, are much smaller than the army itself. So the traditional philosophy is to hold the ground, mm -hmm. to uh, expel any foreign invasion, and that's why China was divided into seven military regions. Each mm -hmm military region is supposed to fight a war in its own capacity mm. without being supported by any other part uh, of the military. Mm. And okay. uh, therefore the uh, ground force, the army was very, very important. But now China is changing. China is already the largest trading nation in the world and mm. Chinese economic interests reach all corners of the world. And the Chinese military is also very much involved in, mm. let's say, anti-piracy, anti-terrorism operations uh, in many parts of the world. And I think uh, the coordination between the army, which is traditionally very, very important, mm -hmm. with the Air Force, with the Navy, mm -hmm. with the Rocket Force, so that eventually we will have a more or less a vertical overarching framework right. where all these military weapons, soldiers, officers, and uh, instruments can be pr applied in a more comprehensive and integrated way. Mm -hmm. That's a big purpose for this military reform. Do you think the changes to the general political department are expected to root out any corruption in the military? Well, the corruption in the Chinese military over the past uh, several years has been deeply rooted and it came as a complete shock to the Chinese people. Uh, this military reform is very, very timely in the sense that in doing all the restructuring mm -hmm. and the revamping and the upgrading of the Chinese military capacities and forces and uh, processes, one key mission is to eliminate corruption mm -hmm. among the ranks and files of the army, especially at the general level, but also to build up systems and institutionalize sufficient amount of checks and balances mm -hmm. so, so that going forward, military officers can no longer commit such large-scale mm. corruption on a systematic basis. Or if corruption is uh, committed, uh, there should be a speedy way of mm. uh, discovering Punishing. these corruption and bring mm -hmm. justice to bear on all those soldiers and officers who are mm. corrupt. What you think are the implications of this reform in the region? Uh, first of all, this reform is long overdue and is highly necessary. Secondly, I think it will turn the Chinese military into a much more modernized, upgraded and leaner and effective and more lethal military going forward. Uh, hopefully the neighboring countries as well as countries throughout the world will realize that the Chinese military's mission is to defend China rather than invading any other country's territory. Well, I guess that's the concern that other countries might see this reform and think and, and be threatened by it. Uh, yes, I think uh, there will be such concern. Our task is to talk to all the countries concerned, not only neighboring countries, but major countries like the United States in particular, about our real strategic intention. Because mm -hmm. by understanding each other and making our military intention more transparent mm -hmm. to the other countries, it will help calm down the nerves. And the building up of the Chinese military is purely for the defense of our nation against foreign invasions and our neighboring countries and countries throughout the world do not need to worry about Chinese soldiers invading their country. That's something that Chinese military and China will never do. Okay, we're going to take a short break, but please stay with us. Welcome back. I've been discussing the strategy and effects of China's military reform plan with current affairs commentator Victor Gao. How about the army's role responding to natural disasters? We asked people in Beijing whether humanitarian relief should become a core task for the army. Let's look. Uh, 
，而且对他们是非常的敬佩，他们肯定起的是一种主力军的作用。解放军在关键的时刻还是能够挺身而出，因为他们是一不怕苦，二不怕死的典范。但是我觉得那个五幺二就是特别感人，然后当时看到他们就是徒手在那个废墟里边救孩子、救救大人呢，就就比较热泪盈眶的那种感觉。解放军为我们的祖国、为我们的强大、为我们的人民做出了很大的贡献，我们应该给他点赞。啊，我觉得在解放军在救灾过程中有两个方面重要的作用吧，就是说，第一个就是说，在那个就整个救灾过程中，解放军的迅速出现能给当地居呃居民、人民一个心理上的安慰；第二个就是解放军具有统一指挥、统一调度的能力，也就是说，能在尽快的把灾难的那个伤害减到最小，同时能最快限度的完成防灾救灾工作。哦，你觉得解放军应该参与国际救援吗？呃，应该就是说这样，我觉得这样有利于我们国际中国国际形象的提高。What do you think about the the role of the military in disaster relief work? I think in China as well as in many other countries, the military always has a very important role in natural disaster relief. In China, it's even much more so. China, unfortunately, is a natural disaster prone country, sometimes with very large scale、uh, disasters and. In times of crisis, when lives are being threatened,、uh, the Chinese military always move, mobilizes, and rushes to the forefront、mm -hmm. of providing relief. And we, on the civilian side of the equation, are always feeling indebted、mm -hmm. and in great gratitude for the military's great contribution to save lives in、mm -hmm. times of great difficulty. Uh, Victor Gao,、uh, as China's、um, importance or role in the global world order、um, grows, you know, do you foresee its role in global peacekeeping missions also improve? Oh, this is one great contribution that the Chinese military is making to the United Nations peacekeeping、mm, uh, force. Eight thousand four, eight、uh, thousand army personnel. Yes, my understanding is that China sends the largest amount of peace. Keepers to、mm -hmm. operate under the United Nations banner,、mm -hmm. and China's peace、uh, keepers in total are more than all the other four permanent member states of the United Nations Security Councils combined. China, as a permanent mem member state of the Security Council of the United Nations,、mm -hmm. feels that it's not only its own obligation、mm -hmm. to provide such contribution, but also this is one way to make sure that China. Is an important country、mm -hmm. on the global stage, and I guess that does tie in with you know building a, a more sophisticated army and、uh, defence force as well. Definitely, I think、uh, the military reform that's going on as we speak、mm. is not only meant to improve efficiency of the Chinese military forces inside China, but eventually, whenever there is a need, you know, either operating under the United Nations peacekeeping missions, for example. Or whenever it is necessary going forward in fighting against international terrorism、mm -hmm. in different parts of the world, the Chinese military forces will be there. China's military is already very much involved in fighting against piracy,、mm -hmm. especially offshore from Somalia, and we have made great contributions through protecting、uh, civilian ships、uh, in that part of the world. But going forward, I think the Chinese military. Will definitely have a much more important role in joining other forces in the world to fight against international terrorism. Thank you very much for coming on the program, Victor Gao. As always, thank you for having me. If you have any comments or questions, please reach us on Facebook, Weibo, or WeChat. And we'll see you next time for more stories and discussion on China, out of China. <laughs>